Today we are going to be learning about motion, including distance, displacement, velocity, speed, and acceleration. Let's start with motion in general. Motion must be described with respect to a frame of reference. A frame of reference is a system of objects that are not moving with respect to one another. For example, let's say that you're inside a bus going 45 miles per hour. I know this is not a bus, but pretend. So it's going 45 miles per hour. You are inside the bus and you are walking forward inside the bus at three miles per hour. And the bus itself is going 45. So how fast are you moving? Well, there's actually two correct answers. If your frame of reference is the bus, compared to the bus, you are going three miles per hour. You assume the bus is staying still and you are moving inside of it. But if your frame of reference is the ground outside the bus, the ground is staying still, the bus is moving, you're moving even faster than the bus is, and together, compared to the ground, you're moving 48 miles per hour. 45 plus 3 miles per hour. You choose your frame of reference by what you want to compare it to. If you wanted to get really crazy, you could say the Earth is spinning on its axis. So we're not just going 48 miles per hour, we're going around and around, so we're going several thousand miles per hour. Or the Earth is moving around the Sun, and the, so it's going even faster. And then the whole entire solar system is speeding through the universe in the Milky Way. So we could say we're going millions of miles per hour depending on what our frame of reference is. And that's why it's very important to say, all right, I'm comparing my motion to this object. We're assuming this is staying still and I am moving or this object is moving. So let's talk about the difference between distance and displacement. Distance is the length of a path between two points. It doesn't matter if the path does this, does this, or what. The length of the full path, no matter how long it goes, is the distance. Displacement is how far it is from displace to dat place, ha ha, in a straight line. So it is the shortest distance between two points, plus it is also the direction that you're going. Here's an example. Let's say that you're walking home. Right here, even with the edge of the desk, is where you are now. And each tile on the floor is one foot. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six feet later, you've arrived home. The displacement between where you were and home is six feet. Six feet west. That's north, south, east, and west. So six feet west is your displacement. You're six feet west of where you started. Now, the distance is a little bit different. Let's say that you're drunk and walking home. All right, so are you going to walk in a straight line? No. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14 feet is the distance you traveled to get from where you were to home. So the distance was 14 feet, but your displacement, even when you walked home drunk, is six feet west of where you started. By the way, a displacement must have both a direction and a distance. What if you were playing baseball? Let's say this is home, this is first base, second base, third base, and back to home. So what if you run the bases and end up home again? Well, the distance that you travel, let's say it's 50 feet to first base, 50 feet to second base, 50 feet to third base, and 50 feet to home. You just traveled a distance of 200 feet. But what about the displacement? Well, we started at displace, and we ended up at displace. So the distance between where we started and where we ended up is actually zero. So we had a displacement of zero. We are zero feet from where we started. Isn't that crazy? So the displacement cancels out because we started and ended at the same point. 
So when can distance and displacement be equal? Only if they are in a straight line. If you do anything other than a straight line, your distance will be larger than your displacement. Now, distance is a scalar. A scalar has only magnitude. What's magnitude? Well, if you think the magnitude of an earthquake, that's how big the earthquake is. So the magnitude of your distance is how big your distance is. It's the number. Displacement, on the other hand, is a vector. It has both magnitude and a direction. You must have a direction. It's how, may, how far from where you started and in what direction from where you started. You can represent a vector like displacement on a map with an arrow. An arrow will show both the distance by how long or short the arrow is, and it will also show the direction by the point of the arrow. Now when you add two displacements, you use a technique called vector addition. If they go in the same direction, you add them. If they go in opposite directions, you subtract them. You put the vectors head to tail. The point of this arrow goes to the tail of that arrow. Or the point of this arrow goes to the tail of that arrow. And the resultant vector, the answer, is the sum of the two vectors, making one of them negative if they go opposite directions. Here's an example. A car travels four kilometers east, then two kilometers east. What is the total displacement? Well, if we sketch this, we draw a line four kilometers, okay, it's not four kilometers long, but we draw a line representing a length of four kilometers, and we draw a line about half that length representing two kilometers, going in the same direction. So the total displacement from where you started to where you ended is six kilometers. The total distance you traveled to get there is also six kilometers. Now I left something out of the displacement. What did I forget? I forgot to tell the direction. We are six kilometers east of where we started. All right, this time a car travels four kilometers east, then two kilometers west. See how we put the head of this arrow at the tail of that arrow? So, our displacement is where we started to where we finished. We finished two kilometers away from where we started. And we finished two kilometers east of where we started. Now, the total distance to get there, we went four and then we went two, so we went a total distance of six kilometers. See the difference? Next, let's talk about speed and velocity. Speed is how fast you're going. It's distance divided by time. Uh, for example, miles per hour is a unit for speed, and miles are a distance, and hours are the time. So that is a distance per time. Rotations per minute, like how fast something is spinning, rotations is kind of like the distance, minute would be the time. Meters per second, the meters are the distance, the seconds are the time. So those are all units for speed. Speed is a rate. A rate is a change over time. Speed is how your position changes over time. I was here, now I'm here. How fast did it change? That's the speed. The average speed is for your entire trip. It's the total distance divided by the total time. However, instantaneous speed is for one exact instant in time. It's how fast you're going right then. Here's an example. Let's say you're at the intersection of 64 and 109 and you're going south to Denton. That takes about 10 minutes. You have exactly 10 minutes to get there, and when you get there, you've got a haircut appointment in exactly 10 minutes from now. So that's perfect. You have just enough time to get there. You know how it is. You get behind some little old lady that's going 45 miles an hour, and you're like, no, because the speed limit, as you know, is 55, not 45. So you're stuck behind this lady for five miles, going 45 miles per hour and you are about to go crazy and finally halfway to Denton she turns off and you're like oh thank goodness well now you're running late so instead of going 45 or 55 you're like okay I'm gonna go 65 and if I made half the trip at 45 and half the trip at 65 that'll average out to 55 and I'll be there on time so you zip right along 
okay? So your average speed is 55 miles per hour. But of course, you know how this works. You're speeding and the one time you're speeding, that's when the cops get behind you and they pull you over for speeding and you're sitting there and you say, but officer, my average speed was 55. Because I went 10 miles under the speed limit for the first half of the trip, I went 10 miles over the speed limit for the second half of the trip, see it averages to 55. Is the cop gonna take that explanation? No. So, because the cop wants to know what is your instantaneous speed? What is your speed at that instant? And that's what you get a ticket for, not your average speed. So let's take a look at how to calculate speed and velocity. Take out your reference table and look at the first page and the first equation. It says V equals delta D over delta T. Yes, that's a V with a line over it. The line over it means average velocity. It's not a triangle, it's a V. This is a triangle. This is the Greek letter delta. It eventually became our capital D. And so delta means change in, change in distance over change in time. If you forget what those letters mean, you can look them up over here on your reference table. You will always have a reference table on every test, every quiz, and on the exam. So that's why I want you to get used to using this now. Here's an example problem. A passenger elevator travels from the first floor to the 60th floor, a distance of 210 meters in 35 seconds. What is the elevator speed? First, we need to find out what we were given. An elevator travels from the first to the 60th floor, aha, a distance of 210 meters. Underline 210 meters, and they told us that was our distance, so put a D. In 35 seconds, seconds is a time, so we put a T. What is the elevator's speed? Now, in this formula, we don't have speed, we have velocity. But, at this time, we can consider speed and velocity to be interchangeable. So, we put V equals question mark to remind ourselves that we're looking for velocity. This is the only formula we've used so far in this unit, but if you were trying to figure out which formula to use and you had a bunch of formulas, then you would say, okay, I need a formula with distance, time, and velocity. And looky there, there it is. Here's what you do with this formula. The formula was velocity is distance over time. Take that formula and put it into a large triangle. Split the triangle up with a capital T to split it into three sections. Notice distance is divided by time. So when you put this formula into the triangle, you put distance on top and time on bottom. Ve velocity goes in the empty space, which happens to be on the bottom. Now, if we solve for distance, we cover up distance, and velocity and time multiply, side by side multiply. If we're solving for time, we cover up time, and it's distance divided by velocity. And if we're solving for velocity, we cover up velocity, and it's distance divided by time. So let's see how to solve this equation. We were looking for the velocity, we cover it up, distance goes on top, time goes on bottom. So our distance is 210 meters, and our time is 35 seconds. You only have to show me what numbers did you use, and did you multiply or did you divide? You don't have to show me any extra work other than that, unless you just want to. If you want to put the units, you may. These are meters, and these are seconds. And take 210, divide it by 35, and your answer is 6. Now, we must have units. Do meters and seconds cancel? No. You keep them both, and it's 6 meters per second. Remember, a number without a unit is meaningless. For example, if you asked me how much I weighed and I told you 68, you'd say, liar, kilograms. <laughs> I do weigh 68 kilograms. So units do matter. Number two, a motorcycle is moving at a constant speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Aha, they told us this is the speed. We are gonna use V for velocity, which is like speed. 
How long does it take the motorcycle to travel a distance of 10 kilometers? They want to know how long does it take. Now, is how long the distance or is how long the time? Well, they're asking you about the time. So how long does it take? The time is what we're looking for. And it's traveling a distance of 10 kilometers. So this is D for distance. And if you weren't sure how long is it, how far it is or how long it takes, then you could say, oh, well, this is distance, so this must be time. Now, use your formula, plug in the numbers, and see if you can figure this out. Pause the video now and try it. We are finding time. We cover up time, so our formula is distance divided by velocity. Distance goes on top, 10. Velocity goes on bottom, 40. Do your math. 10 divided by 40 gives us 0.25. And now what units? Well, 40 is kilometers per hour, and the distance is kilometers. So we have kilometers and we have hours. Which one is actually a unit of time? Oh, hours. So 0.25 hours, a quarter of an hour, is how long it takes. You try number three and see if you can get it. Pause the video. How far does a car travel in 0.75 hours if it is moving a constant speed of 88 kilometers per hour? How far is the distance? That's what we're looking for. 0.75 hours is the time, and 88 kilometers per hour is the speed or velocity. We're looking for distance, cover up distance, and it's velocity times time. You try that and see if you can get the answer. Now you're looking for a unit. Uh, notice that we have hours and kilometers, and the distance, kilometers, is the unit of distance. So our answer is in kilometers. Next, let's talk about velocity. Velocity is both speed and direction. It is a vector. So velocity is a vector. Speed is a scalar. See how that'll help you remember it? So velocity includes a magnitude, the speed, how fast you're going, and the direction that you're going. So a change in velocity can be caused either by a change in speed or a change in direction. That's kind of weird, but it turns out if you're going in circles at a steady speed, you are actually changing your velocity. Even though you're going the same speed, you're changing your velocity because you're changing your direction. Isn't that crazy? Velocities can be added just like displacements can by vector addition. If your velocities are going the same direction, add them. If they're going opposite directions, subtract them. For example, a boat is moving 12 kilometers per hour downstream relative to the river. So here's a, a sketch of this. There's my boat, there's the river. The boat is moving 12 kilometers per hour downstream. The current of the river is moving five kilometers per hour downstream. So what is the velocity of the boat relative to the riverbank? See, the boat is compared to the water and the water is compared to the riverbank. Comparing both to the riverbank, we add them together, and that gives us a total of 17 kilometers per hour. But what are we missing? Ah, a direction. We are going an overall direction of downstream. A boat is moving 12 kilometers per hour upstream this time, and the current of the river is still going five kilometers per hour downstream. What is the velocity of the boat relative to the riverbank? Well, do we add or subtract these numbers? Notice that they're going in opposite directions. We subtract. So 12 minus 5 gives us a speed of 7 kilometers per hour. And which direction is the boat moving compared to the riverbank, upstream or downstream? Well, it's going faster upstream than the water is going downstream, so the boat is moving upstream. 